Welcome back to the Green Yard and to a beautiful, slightly warm August afternoon here in Phoenix, Arizona. We are in the tropical food forest part of the Green Yard. This is a part where we have all of our fruiting and flowering tropical trees, such as our rose apple, our custard apple, our ajaba de cava, papaya, um, jackfruit tree and the list goes on and we're here today for one of our how's it growing videos and these are videos where we kind of do an update on how our fruit trees have been growing for a certain amount of time whether it be a year two years two and a half years so on and so forth and i'm going to work on putting out some more of these videos because i do think it's important um, that as gardeners fellow gardeners we see kind of how these fruit trees are doing and keep our maybe our expectations in check or see how they should be doing i know i always enjoy going to our local nursery and seeing seeing his fruiting and flowering tropical trees and how they're doing in their space and kind of, um, you know, being a little introspective and looking at my fruit trees and how they're doing compared to his. Um, we're here today doing a How's It Growing video about our Hall avocado tree. Now this tree has been in the ground for two and a half years, almost exactly. It went in the ground back in March of 2022 and it was planted at the time as a, um, a little bit larger seven gallon tree. I usually try to put in the ground three gallon trees. That's just what's in my budget. Um, but the bigger the tree that you can buy, it's always better because it is a little bit more established. For me, at the time, I was able to splurge a little bit and get a seven gallon avocado tree. It was still only about three feet tall at the time and really just kind of a tiny little stick that was put into the ground. Um, we're gonna go through in today's video and talk about kind of my successes with this avocado, uh, failures, some things I noticed and have noticed with growing this avocado here, the placement of the tree, and some more things as well. So stay tuned to learn more about how our avocado has been doing in the last two and a half years in ground here in Phoenix, Arizona. Here we go. Actually have a couple parts to our food forest this is in the introduction part of the food forest going to our Mexican papaya and you'll notice we actually have a ripe papaya on here this one's kind of a twofer um, so I am gonna pick it still because it is that ripe papaya looks delicious um, we actually have another one here as well which I'll pick a little bit later but it's always really fun to be able to pick the food that we grow and then eat it. These Mexican papayas have been absolutely delicious so far here in the Phoenix uh, food forest in the green yard. If we look up, we have this huge male mulberry tree. This is the mulberry tree that provides us some afternoon shade. And we're gonna talk about why that's important here in a minute. And then we kind of have go past our introduction part of the food forest part of the green yard. We have our rose apple here as well as our Monstera, which is in full sun right now, not really enjoying it. We just released a Loquat update. Loquat is uh, over there in the corner. That has been in the ground for almost four years now. We have our Koi Fish Pond just past our Hall Avocado tree here. Koi Fish Pond adding a little bit of maybe humidity as well as beauty to the food forest part of the green yard. And then we do also have our Adam Moya, which we just did a little update growing video on as well. Hall avocado tree is positioned over here um, in a really good spot. So for our hall avocado trees, what we want to do with them is we actually want to make sure that they are um, in one of the shadiest spots of the yard. Maybe give them a little bit of sun at the beginning of the day and that's about it. So for this one, it gets sun until about uh, 10, 30, 11 o'clock, depending on the time of year. And then it gets no sun after that or filtered sun like it is right now. I actually put it on the other side of this huge trunk that we have from our male mulberry tree. And you'll notice that that male mulberry tree then protects that tree, provides that westward afternoon shade 
for pretty much the rest of the day and that is what we want um, our biggest killer of avocado trees here in the phoenix area is our summer sun they do not like our summer sun in fact you can even see on here it has been getting a little bit too much sun on this side right here and we do have some burnt leaves you'll notice um, like this guy right here all sunburnt same with this guy so even with this spot that's super shady super secluded it is still getting too much afternoon sun which uh, is a little surprising at times considering it is behind that huge male mulberry trunk there and getting all that afternoon shade You'll notice that this tree, um, as we're approaching into fall, is actually putting out a whole bunch of new growth. Um, I've noticed this tree this year in particular, this kind of second year in the ground, putting out a ton, ton of new growth. It has grown exponentially in height and size so far this year, really starting to branch out and kind of fill in this space here in the food forest, which is what we want it to do. Um, it does have all this space to kind of grow in and uh, utilize here as well. So um, we know that summer sun is definitely one of the negatives to growing an avocado here in the Phoenix area. Uh, avocados actually love our winter, which is awesome. So I do not have to cold protect this tree and I have not cold protected this tree at all since it has been in the ground. It loves and thrives through our winter even when we hit that 30 degree mark, 28 degree mark here in the food forest part of the green yard. Let's go ahead and talk about some amendments as well as uh, some of the feeding fertilizing that I do for this tree. All right, so kind of here in my happy spot underneath my beautiful hall avocado tree. Um, I know we talked about sun exposure and kind of the climate wise. Um, so what do we do for feeding though? And what have I found success with for feeding, watering, things like that? Well, the first thing that I did when I put this tree in the ground um, is I heavily mulch. So I have all these wood chips, all this mulch here that's all over the ground and um, that mulch really does provide kind of this insulating layer that keeps uh, the tree more moist throughout the, the year. Um, it also helps to uh, reduce the amount that I have to water this tree to. This year we've been exponentially warm and uh, even right now it's only 108 degrees but it feels hot, like it feels really warm today. And um, I'll notice when I stick my hand in here, I haven't watered for about a week. We're on that week mark and it's still moist when I stick my hand in here. So we still have kind of that moist, moist dirt in here, um, which is clumping a little bit. I'm not sure if you guys could see that or not. So that mulch definitely helps to keep that um, soil moist. And I would recommend mulching your avocado tree when you put it in the ground. Um, that mulch also helps provide kind of this network for like our my mycelium, our beneficial bacteria, beneficial mold that creates kind of this network of nutrients. And it also allows for more organic material and organic matter to break down into the soil, thereby allowing for more like water absorption and things like that. In terms of feeding, I actually just did a uh, short on how I fertilize my trees. I use mostly fish emulsion. Um, I actually use this avocado tree as an example. So I generally will fill up a five gallon bucket with my fish emulsion, whatever is directed. And then I just kind of throw it on the tree. So uh, even in that short, I went and threw it on the tree. And so far, I, I think it's been doing very well. Um, I tried some synthetic fertilizer, some pellets, things like that. And I just didn't see the results that I been seeing by adding that fish emulsion once a month so usually at the end of the month I'll be out here um, and I will add in that fish emulsion too 
And then in terms of watering, like I mentioned, since we've been so hot, I have been watering once a week. We're here in uh, the green yard, we're on flood irrigation. So we do have our yard get flooded one, one part of the week. And then I do also fill up uh, kind of the berm that I have here for this avoca whole avocado tree with water um, on the opposite end of like the next week, right? So a week away, seven days away, I'll fill up the berm. And then we kind of keep on that week rotation. During the winter, I only water once a month and the whole avocado tree seems to be doing great with that once a month schedule during the winter. So really something that you have to play with, with your soil, where your tree's planted, and just kind of see what is successful for you. Uh, this tree did put out uh, some avocados this spring. They only got to be maybe a dime size and then they did drop off the tree, but I'm hoping with this amazing growth that we're getting that we get some really great uh, and maybe even our first really great flowers and maybe even our first avocado this coming year. If you guys have any questions about growing avocados here in Phoenix, please feel free to comment below. I have had my share of failures as well. In fact, I tried to plant an avocado back in, uh, it was July, end of July, beginning of August. Did not make it, uh, it was not the best spot. It actually got a little bit of afternoon sun and unfortunately it just fried, fried up all the way down. So uh, really the microclimate and that spot that you put it in is the top priority. But if you guys have any questions, please feel free to comment below. Follow us on social media for more great green content. And if you guys saw any of the trees or any anything that you would like a video on, please make sure to comment as well. I love to make videos based on people's comments to kind of get you the information and the content that you would like to see. And of course, as always, make sure to live green, plant lots, and have fun. We'll see you guys next time.